<laughs> Good evening. <laughs> Welcome. You're watching Trending SA right here on S3. My name is Mo Flavor, and I'm cruising with uh, fabulous people on this Monday, my favorite people. To my left, we'll start with her, because no doubt she is quick-witted, incredibly funny, and equally gorgeous. Her name is Lissi Oh, my gosh, guys. We've come to the end of the season. I'm so sad. But we did it, Joe. We did it. <laughs> That's right. And, of course, uh, the man who sits comfortably on his throne, you know what they say, heavy lies the crown, that sort of thing. It's the emperor of Umlazi, my player. You know, people actually think, Uwuti, that's just something, it is. It's tough to be me. <laughs> what happened to your sister? <sighs> you imagine you sit there we go. <laughs> so I have the honor of introducing our guest tonight. She is a broadcast and media powerhouse with over 15 years of using her critical thinking and analysis for TV, radio, and various news outlets. She has positioned herself as a formidable voice in our society and in our family, having the <laughs> forefront of robust, challenging, and nuanced conversations that inform, entertain, and give a different outlook on matters of national importance. Mm. Absolutely. She is a pioneer, and uh, no doubt, she is here to pass on the baton to us, the new kids on the block, who are also trying to do this uh, talk TV thing. So help us welcome the legendary, the iconic, Meh Aus, the great Ridi Klaubi. She is doing a special takeover episode, and we've decided to call it Something absolutely special. Tea and tell with Reedy. Good evening. How did you know I like tea? Well, you know, word gets that's around. That's all I drink, you know. That's beautiful. And word gets okay, around. That's not true. That's really not true. And, and we've noticed that this, this, this uh, teapot has been doing the rounds all over the country. Mm. Okay. Yes. You know? In Kanta, we got it from in Kanta. So it's been around, this thing. So it's here to grace. <laughs> okay, thanks. Our, you you see what I'm saying? <laughs> It is an absolute pleasure and an honor to have you on. Um, mm. I'll do my fanning thing and my everything else off, off <laughs> set. But I want to talk about um, this particular moment with you um, for a month being a guest editor mm. at the Mail and Guardian. And we all know um, the story of the Mail and Guardian and its role in investigative journalism. I mean, let's talk about how that came about for you. Who called who? <laughs> The CEO of the Mail and Guardian, Hussein, called me and offered me the job of editor-in-chief. And I said, I don't want to work every day. <laughs> I don't think I can do it. And I know that print is very overwhelming. It's a lot of work. I think in broadcasting, we get away with a lot. Mm. Because all we have to do is just opine. And then if you've made a mistake, you can just fix it right there on the spot. Mm. The checks and balances, I just don't have that kind of energy to do it full sure. time. But I thought it would be a great advantage, advantage to just um, go back to what I love doing. That's beautiful. And I know, I mean, I, I used to read your columns in, in various publications. You Thank know? you. Um, Someone and, did. Uh, no, is for, this for sure. just going to be Mo Flavor sucking up to Oh, yeah. Like, I don't understand. <laughs> like, oh, why not? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> hey, I don't want to swap places. I think, yeah, no, we should. Yeah. We should. <laughs> So, uh, th so this is not a new terrain for you, but it's interesting you, you talk about, you know, saying you don't want to work every day, but why now? I mean, it, why this particular moment, you think? Why this particular moment with the Mail and sure, Guardian? Why did so. they choose okay. you, actually? I'd Ask them. I don't know. <laughs> crazy. I also thought, hey, guys, I'm retired. Leave me alone. Leave me uh, alone. I, I don't know. I actually don't know. I think because mm. I, I am known as someone who's addicted mm. to news, but I'm not just addicted to news because that's easy. Mm. I'm really addicted to sound editorial practices. Mm -hmm. And I think that sometimes being on the sidelines and talking mm -hmm. about the lack thereof mm -hmm. is easy, but let's go test this thing that I'm passionate about. And hmm. Speaking of editorial uh, practices mm -hmm. and making them sound, you probably, when you got the call, you had a personal mandate and you were just like, Nzoba they don't know who I am. <laughs> and then you went in there. What was that personal editorial mandate and did you achieve it? Can I tell you something? I think because of what you said about the Mail and Guardian, it's an institution. Mm. It's legendary. Mm. You can't talk about South Africa's political landscape and transition mm. without the Mail and Guardian. So I was actually nervous and anxious mm. because I knew that I was going to work with real and proper journalists. Mm. And by that, I mean not the he says, he says. They work really hard. There's nothing that I can teach them. Absolutely nothing. Mm. They've broken the most important stories. They are very, very savvy. They've got a consciousness and a, a commitment mm. to uh, the sanctity of journalism and news and mm. how important it is to uh, the edifice of our democracy. So I am lucky. I think the hardest thing to do is to manage a newsroom of people who are not committed. Mm. Not people who don't have experience because we all one day 
at some point didn't have experience, sure. no. Mm. But these are people who've, who've really, they are authorities in their field. And so I just literally had to manage uh, the mm. process, maybe suggest new products mm. like podcasts and so on. Mm and uh, just just perhaps pick out the stories that are more conversational and not too academic and intellectual mm. because I think people don't have time to read like that. Yeah, no Long yeah. format, nobody does. You know, I mean, with all due respect to everybody who likes <laughs> long format journalism, I do. But can you accommodate a reader who's just as smart, mm. just as curious, just as intelligent, but doesn't have the whole day to I'm read laughing it. at the fact that, you know when you log onto a website and then they say that, please uh, subscribe to read the rest of the story, I'm usually fine by then. <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm, no, I'm like, oh, that's what happened, oh, thank no. you. <laughs> we, need, we want you to subscribe, we need you to, you figured it out. You figured it out, I'm like, oh, more flavor involved in a scandal, what happened? Arrested, <laughs> live. Subscribe for more. <laughs> No, thanks. <laughs> but if that kind of uh, topic were to be presented in a different way, a podcast, mm. I mean, part of what makes Trending Essay so beautiful, it's your personalities, mm. um, the, the kind of you feeding off each other's <laughs> energies. <laughs> oh, my word, the humility. The in the <laughs> I, mean, oh. I love this woman so much. <laughs> So I wanted to ask, like, obviously we've seen journalism go through different stages. We've seen citizen journalism come up, social media journalism, the, the kind that might play, you know, headline and, and <laughs> cruise journalism. What do you think about the state of journalism in this country right now? I mean, I know I have my own opinions and I've seen you tweet them, <laughs> but, you know, just to, you know, summarise what you think of journalism. I do think that broadcasting is the weakest link in the news ecosystem. Why? Because... I think print journalists have fed us for so long. I would not have had the Reedy Clavy show on 702 for 12 years, successful, on point, were it not for print mm. media. Because I'm not an investigative journalist. Mm. I can do investigation, but that's not what I'm doing as a talk show mm. host. I relied on their content. So I made it as a principle. I gave, I credited the newspaper from which I was quoting. Mm. I interviewed the journalists who did the work mm. so that when I expand the story and I bring a different angle, I can say you built it. Very often, I just hear as I'm driving, journalists in the, in the uh, talk show hosts in the studio just reading a newspaper and not, and not, and not crediting that person. Ooh. So I think that's what's wrong to, uh, to answer your question. The second thing that just drives me up the wall, and I know I irritate a lot of people, and they're going to have to just sort themselves out <laughs> because it's the truth. The he says, he says. Mm -hmm. Tokyo spent three hours saying on TV, unfiltered, you, you repeat, that's, what, that's how Trump got into office. That's, what Bre <laughs> that's how Brexit happened. Mm. And the media likes to kind of disengage when uh, the brown stuff hits the fan. Mm. They're not having conversations around how did we contribute to this fear mongering. Mm. The way we report about uh, migrants, immigrants, if you're gonna say uh, Mexicans have flooded the border, mm. immediately you're creating an us and them, mm. okay? If you're going to be reporting about um, a woman who's just been appointed to the World Trade Organization and say a mother of four or mother of five, twice divorced, those kinds of framing are very, very dangerous. And we don't understand that they're not just words. They matter. They create our perception. They inform how we respond to each other. If I'm going to write, be writing about foreign nationals as thieves, as people who are out to get us, mm. then I mustn't be surprised when communities turn against them. So that's what I think is wrong. A lack of freedom. I'm also a fan now. I'm just like, oh, <laughs> you, see, this is oh, you are not. <laughs> <laughs> and what, what really has done here, right, is, is sort of remind us and show us what it is that people follow her for. And obviously she does it naturally, mm. but that is the thing. People rely on you for clarity on a number of matters, your opinion, perspective, all of that. That's a massive thing. But who do you turn to for the same thing? In other words, who do you look to as a source of clarity to sharpen your inner voice? Mm. Do you have someone like that? I, I wouldn't say I've got an individual, mm. but I, I, I read a lot. Mm. I read a lot. I, I read all the time. And I can't pick just one uh, essay or one treatise, one book. But every time I read those kind of things, they, they, they just sharpen my gaze and they, they remind me that I don't know everything. Mm. Um, I, I, I don't know enough to stop wanting to know. But I think there are people who kind of invested in me when I was very, very young, when I started out. Bruce Whitfield, who is now at my former uh, mm. place of employment, mm. he was my editor when I was an intern. Mm -hmm. And I'd bring a script and he'd say, uh, what, what does this mean? And I couldn't answer it. So if, if you don't understand it, neither does the, the, the listener. Sure. Mm. And quite frankly, 
the, the, the one thing you must do as a journalist is always think like your listener. You are informing. Yes. It's not in one-upmanship that I'm cleverer than you. Yes. And there's no point in me saying something that I myself don't yes. understand. Going back to your question, how do I keep myself in check? I watch the people that I admire. Sure. I watch them just owning the thing. Yep. And I think, I want to be like that. Or I wouldn't have asked that question that way. What a brilliant thing to and do. That, like when you watch <laughs> Trending SA. Yeah, and that's why yes, we, 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 we listen to many a radio show, watch many a shows on <laughs> television as well. I like, I like that, Mo, you heard. You guys should watch me <laughs> when I'm on the show. Watch the people you admire. Love yourself. Listen, <laughs> Love it's time yourself. for a quick commercial break. Tea and Tell with Reedy continues after the break as we talk about Reedy's relationships with social media, uh, media, current affairs, and if she's good with games, as she's good with words. Find out shortly when we come back. Remember, the hashtag for this exclusive season finale is Tea and Tell with Reedy. Sometimes we take the fall, thinking that there's nothing left. But see, you got to Welcome be back strong. to Sa on 3. It is our season finale, and we are graced by the iconic, legendary broadcaster and even more legendary stepmother, Reedy Clabby, in what we have coined hashtag TNTL with Reedy. Mm. So, I mean, let's talk about content um, and the kind of stuff you consume outside of the usual content that you deal with, which is news and all of that. What else are you into besides consuming your family and your husband and her? Not consuming her. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, Save me oh, from these questions. Consumption in terms of time <laughs> and attention. I think they've got dirty money. I, I, I absolutely agree. We consume news. So what else do I consume? Yeah. Outside of that. I you consume my dad. <laughs> hey. Naughty <laughs> boy. <laughs> you guys. <laughs> The age difference is showing. <laughs> <laughs> Utterly hard, didn't you? Welcome to Children of today. <laughs> sure. I, I love 90 Day Fiancé. I love okay. it. Yes. And when I first started watching it, my husband would say, what, what are you watching? Yeah. And then the brother started sitting down next to me. And now he's into it. <laughs> so I love it. I love it. Do you it. know Uncle Vinny? OK, so <laughs> let me tell you something. I saw her tweet about... Vinny, and I thought, why is she talking about Vinny Da Vinci? <laughs> <laughs> That's before her time. And all this time, I thought you guys were talking about Vinny Da Vinci. And then this morning, uh, a, 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 a neurologist, neurosurgeon, uh, Dr. Kotlega, who's on Twitter, and I know her from Twitter, <laughs> she said, well, she, I, I woke up to a tweet from her that said the whole time she thought it was Vinny Da Vinci. I'm like, yeah, but it is Vinny Da Vinci. <laughs> <laughs> <And> See, <laughs> I've been vindicated because we did an episode with the Uncle Vinny story and we're just like, people above 35, the only Vinny we knew is Vinny Da Vinci. What do you mean we? You're not above 35. <laughs> 36. Everybody here except me. I'm 36. Uh, I'm okay. old. You're my peer. Right? Yeah. Okay, so obviously we've seen on the socials the explosive Prince Harry and Meghan Markle interview. Um, and people were kind of giving names for who would host the South African version of a big towel. Your name obviously came up, <laughs> which we agree. What did you think when you heard that? And would you actually do it? I would. <laughs> I would have done an interview like that by Jove. Wow. But I would have interrogated Harry a little bit more when he said, he kind of, uh, we, and I thought he was showing fragility. Mm -hmm. And I think when someone like that, you don't go out and nail them because we're all becoming to steal mm -hmm. from Michelle Obama's word. But when he admitted to not before being aware mm -hmm. of his privilege, I was like, no, 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 You know, of course you were. You're a prince. You know, of course you were. And I would have asked him, did you have any black friends growing mm. up? I would have asked him, so that somebody who's watching, so, so people don't think they are, um, they are sexist. Mm. And, and telling them they're sexist doesn't help. Mm. Sometimes you demonstrate, you take them on a journey. What do you think when you see women? What do you think when it, and then it's like penny drops. Mm. So I would have kind of left <laughs> Megan out for a little bit. Mm. And because of this political moment where this thing matters so much, mm. where it, it is, a life and death matter for the survival of, 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 of humanity and our race relations and so on, I would have created space for him to just tell us a little bit more about what mm. you understand by this. Mm. this sure. I would have loved to do it. Ooh. I mean, who marks Oprah, guys? <laughs> <laughs> Sitting there. Nah, I would have. No, so, it's so if you could sit down, I'm going to give you a few political figures, uh, South African figures, okay. public figures, and uh, if, you could, if you could sit down with them, I want to know what's that one burning question that you would ask. So I'm um, just one question. 
that you would ask that you you remember you said that you want to ask that just that one question so adam habib what's what? that one question that you would want to ask him adam what were you thinking <laughs> 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 okay, the the next person you wanted to actually cross examine them at the state capture <laughs> inquiry. It. So if it. you could, if you could interview Jacob Zuma, what's that one question that you would ask him? I'm actually very bored with Zuma. <laughs> he's the one who went to the state capture commission and used my name. I was on the playground playing with my kids, <laughs> and then my phone is ringing, and we everybody's going to calling me. <laughs> and then I went. And then my husband phones and says, "Ha, where? Now why didn't you tell me you're a filmmaker?" <laughs> <laughs> so he's teasing. Well, like, what are you talking about? What are you talking about, Gandhi? I mean, that August occasion, such an important moment of former president. You like the torch bearer of this thing that our country is going through. That's your moment. And you go and mention me. <laughs> and then say, you're obsessed with He's obsessed with me. But anyway, if I, mm. I, I, I can't think of anything I want to ask him okay. because I've been there, done that already. Mm. But I would ask, if I had to with a gun to my head, mm. can you flip and pay maintenance for your children? No. I mean, at your age, oh, why <laughs> are you happy being taken to court for maintenance? <laughs> I mean, at 70, I mean, at that age, <laughs> 79. No, Wait. guys, I'm actually serious. Okay, uh, then we're moving on. The last one. Wait. No makigam. <laughs> no mam goma. No mam goma, sorry. I would give her a hug, okay? <laughs> and then I would say, don't answer any more questions. Just, just move just, on. Just, just, just leave it. Mm. He's not worth your time. Every time you speak... Uh, people are going to just center him into mm. your life's journey. Mm. And every time you kind of assert yourself, you're going to be reminded of where you go. Just, just leave it. You've got, you've got your life. Mm. Pick it up and move. Mm. Love it. Don't run anywhere. Because <laughs> <laughs> I love creating unnecessary links. We have more from hashtag TNTEL with 3D when we come back. Do not go too far. Welcome back. It's our season finale and we are having an exclusive tea and tell with Ridi Tabi. Ridi, yeah. um, you are heavily in love. You still call Umunduako, who you married to, a boyfriend and roommate. You did not kill him during lockdown last year. So clearly there's something beautiful that's happened. Like, what makes you fall in love with this man over and over again? His kindness. His confidence. Mm. I can't imagine anything worse than being with someone who's not comfortable in their own skin because mm. the environment becomes ugly. He's got a sense of humor. He's very gentle. How much time do I have? <laughs> <laughs> Please carry on. <laughs> and he's gorgeous. He's sexy. He's Ooh. a lovely guy. He's smart. Blocky. <laughs> 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 this, this was a question for me. <laughs> it was a question on Gena. Anyway, no. Don't talk about that. <laughs> but kindness and because that can never get out of fashion. He mm. is really, he cares about mm. people. Mm. He's got time for people. He has a positive word to say about everybody. Mm. And I, I admire that. I'm definitely coming over for lunch. <laughs> it's happening. See, we, we have bypassed you. Yeah, yeah I'm also, coming over for lunch. We're going straight to Parliament. Because <laughs> <laughs> you, you live in Pretoria then. <laughs> now, as much as there's a lot of love and chemistry on all these beautiful things, but there comes a time when there's war, especially when a certain Soweto derby kicks in, <laughs> because then the home is divided. <laughs> we know that it's divided because we know that when... A, in fact, you're wearing black now. Well, we so, sad situation. <laughs> and he's a has a Chiefs fan. Corsi. Yeah. So like pretty much like the rest of us on this table. Uh, what are you? So, I'm, 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 she's whatever we I'm say she is. <laughs> Depends so, on who I'm dating. So, <laughs> and, and we've seen, because you say a lot, you talk too much about the derby yeah. on Twitter. It's fine. How do you guys navigate that space? I'm nice. I'm <laughs> nice. Is that the difference? <laughs> yes. When he loses, I just say, hey. End of the story. Yeah. He. <laughs> and then we'll be in the middle of talking. It's like, <laughs> like, like it never, ever ends. Sure. And he'll shout my name. Hey, baby, you are busy losing. Like, I'm not like that. I'm not, he just goes on and on and on. Sure. Sure. <laughs> um, what is your ingredients for a perfect girls' night out? 
Like, I know people always see you journalistically, but like when Reedy is having a good time with her girls, what's happening? Oh, no, dressing up. I like dressing up, and the higher the shoes, the better. Mm -hmm. Everyone must look nice, beautiful, makeup, elegant, mm. go to a posh restaurant mm. and have conversations. And it's not even conversations about news. I actually don't talk about news when this I'm with my true. friends. I don't. Mm. We talk lovely things, uh, fashion, art, mm. books, and we tease each other. You know, I, I was reflecting the other day that I'm 43 years old in a week. Can I, in a week. Oh, yeah. oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We are in the same age group. Yeah. <laughs> so ah. <laughs> I don't have a single friend with whom I've had a fallout. And wow. I, I actually, yeah, it was just a random mm. thought. I'm like, hey, well done, girl. You wow. know, my, 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 my battles don't last forever. Mm. I always remember the love. Mm. I always remember who that person is. And we can sort this out, right? Mm. So my, my beautiful, safe um, a, a network of friends are my friends from Varsity. We met in 1997, our first year. There's six of us and we're still together today. Mm. And then I've become friends with the wives of my, of my husband's friends. What, what did, Basadi mm. that one, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we know. We become friends and sisters and there's depth there, but there's fun, we can mm. laugh, we can tease each other. I, I just, I love those kind of spaces. Mm. And then I don't talk, I don't stop talking when I'm in those spaces. Uh -huh. It's safe and it's well. lovely and it's beautiful. <laughs> so um, a typical night out like that, dressed up, elegant and chatting, chatting, chatting. I love that. You get blocked a lot. I do. Yeah, you get. Your guy. Surely you, you, surely you do. Surely. By who? You, you must be. be. You must be. Must you get blocked a lot. I get blocked. Yeah. Uh, you would. <laughs> I was not. So I want to know. I want to know on your block list who's the most famous person there. A lot of ministers <laughs> and mayors. Um, the one that I've definitely, definitely muted is that mayor from Egurulen. Egurulen. Yeah. Yeah, because you know I think he's. Thing is actually infuriating. There's no excuse to be, there's no reason he should be like that. <laughs> there's no excuse. There's none. Well, this is what we're here for. We're here for that. So, well, I would like to know, though, actually, so you've talked about muting and blocked. Who is the one person on Twitter that everyone should follow other than Kels or Lissoko? That everyone should follow? Mm. Yeah. Ah, Lizzo, that's such a difficult question, hey? Ma'am, who is your favorite person to I like, I'll, I'll tell you who I love. I absolutely love, and I've got a girl crush on her. Mm. Viola Davis. Oh. Mm. I, 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 <laughs> I, what were you thinking was going to happen here? <laughs> <laughs> it was going to be me in some universe. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Shame, one last, they're abusing you. <laughs> I know. <laughs> one last question. It, this is how we always wrap up these takeovers. Uh, basically, I'm going to ask you a question about, you need to tell me what life has taught you about these three things. Okay. Right? Number one, money. Imali <laughs> Appel. You know, don't get, don't believe the hype that you've got it and you, you won't lose it if you don't do stupid things. If you do stupid things with it, you appeal. So you, so you disagree with Imali Ningi as a song. Okay. <laughs> sex, what has life taught you about sex? Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> <gasps> it is as necessary as breathing. <laughs> okay. Listen, I will actually, I'm trying Thank not to Thank you so make... much, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Lesiko has left the building. Lesiko has left the building. <laughs> what has life taught you about fame? About? Fame. I don't know, because I've never been famous. <laughs> Oh, please. Oh. Anyway, oh, uh, this has been the best. It was a surprise to me. I only found out like five minutes you before lie. you were coming. I promise. I'm so happy you came to my job. You see, I do have a job. <laughs> so, mommy, this is what <laughs> I actually do for a living. This is what I do. It's not just jokes on the internet. I work also. <laughs> thank you so much for coming through and blessing us with your presence. Oh, thank mm. you, my love. Thank you. Thank you. I'm very proud of you. And that is the perfect place to wrap up. <laughs> Hashtag T and Tail with Really Clubby. What a way to end off another beautiful season of Training SA, our first season. How was it for you? Beautiful, and you're such a star. You too, my Probably friend. You really are an emperor. You're okay. Yeah. You really um, are. You <laughs> really are. I, listen, guys, it's, it's actually been a pleasure working with you guys. Uh, I never say these things because they literally rupture my bladder. <laughs> but, oh, my um, word, the drama. <laughs> um, 
It was, it was, it, it, listen, it wasn't painful. <laughs> thank you for welcoming us to your, your show. And, <laughs> I mean, basically, that's what you think. And thank you, Zanzi, for welcoming us onto your screen daily. I've had the absolute blast. Please, please, please pray for us for another season because I'm having so much fun. Yes. Thank you so much, Rudy. Thank you, South Africa. See you soon. Good night. Thanks, guys. Bye. <laughs>